Now that you've had a chance to see what you can do with Flexbox, let's take a look at the code. Each of the examples that you've seen so far uses the exact same markup. It's a div container with four block level elements inside of it. A header, an article, and a side, and a footer. Each of these elements is empty, so in order to give them some structure, I set a min width and a min height of 100 pixels. We'll come back to that later. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's no CSS applied right now, so it's rendering using the default browser layout engine. So these are all block level elements, so they're rendering as a stack. So what we want to do is take our flex div, and make it a flex container, so it no longer uses the default browser layout. So the way we do that is we go into our CSS and we set the display to be flex. Okay, so a couple things. First thing you'll notice is that I use the WebKit browser prefix. And that's because for this example and for what you're doing, uh, you're just creating a prototype. And we're using Chrome. So we only care about whether this works in Chrome or not. So that's why for the rest of this example, we're only going to use the WebKit prefix. And we're going to pretty much do that throughout the rest of the book. So we've set the display to flex, and so now our flex box, and now our div is a flex container, so it's following different layout rules, and you can see that right away. Instead of rendering in a column, it's now rendering in a row. So why is it doing that? Let's take a look. The first thing we need to do is we need to look at the axes that are within the flex container. So I've created this overlay so you can see what I'm talking about. Every flex container has two axes. One is the main axis and the other is the cross axis. The main axis, by default, is horizontal. Cross axis is vertical. You can flip these things around, and I'll show you that in a second. First thing to note, though, is that by default, the main axis is horizontal, and so the flex items flow along the main axis. That's why when we set this container to be a flex container, it flipped from being a column into a row. The best way to think about this, at least the way I think about it, is when the browser is taking your elements and laying it into a flex container, it treats, I think, of the main axis as a clothesline. So as you put each of the elements on the clothesline and slide it to the end of the clothesline, it either hits the end of the clothesline or it hits the next item, and that's what the browser does. It just keeps pushing these things onto the clothesline until it runs out of room, and that's why you get these things stacked next to each other uh, along the main axis. Okay, so how do you move the main axis? Well, the way you do that is you set the WebKit flex, or sorry, the flex flow property. So by default, it's row. So if I set it to row, nothing's gonna happen. But if I set it to column, I'm gonna change the overlay here first. Okay, I need to learn how to type. Okay, so this is what we're going to change the axes to, and this is what happens when you do that. So by setting it to column, the main axis is now vertical, and the elements flow vertically along the main axis. And they start at the top. The top is the start of the main axis, and the left is the start of the cross axis, and of course, vice versa once we flip the main axis back. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a little easier to think about it as a row. Okay, so we've got our main axis back to horizontal and our overlay is matching so we can visualize the axes. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of how things lay out along the axes, uh, we can move things around the box. So when you're thinking about laying things out in a flex container, you don't think of top or left or bottom or right. Instead, what you want to think is uh, beginning of the main axis or the center of the cross axis and be, and the reason you need to think about it that way is because the main axis can change depending on the flex flow setting so uh, and the CSS properties depend on you understanding which way the main axis is pointing so you always need to keep in mind which way the main axis is okay uh, so first thing just to to get used to this is let's move these boxes into the top right corner so, like I said, we don't want to think about top right. Instead, we need to think about these axes. So top right, and in this case, the right is the end of the main axis. So let's do that first. So what we'll do is we set justify content to 
to flex end, and everything should move to the right. So justify content is the CSS property that lets us move things around the main axis. There are a couple options. You have flex end, you have flex start, which is the default. You have center, which move things into the center. And then you also have a couple options here which you don't have along a cross axis, which has to do with spacing. So first one is space around. Space around gives you uh, even space between the elements and then uh, a half the space at, at either end. So if you took the space at the end of uh, on the right and the left and put them together, it would equal the same space that's in the middle of each of these other bars. Uh, and then you also have space between, which sticks things flush to the end and just creates space in the middle. The nice thing about this spacing is it doesn't matter what size the window is, it figures out uh, and distributes the space evenly between each of your elements. Pretty useful for navigation, things like that. So let's go back to this. We're trying to get it in the top right, so we're going to set it to the flex end. Okay, so to move things around the cross axis, we have the same thing. We have align items. Okay, so now we're in the top right. Uh, what that means is we are at the end of the main axis and the start of the cross axis. And that's how you move things around a flex container.